some people said chickens got to have some chicken food. They're not cows. They can't just survive and be healthy on this stuff alone. So I did a little research. What's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope everybody out there had a wonderful Thanksgiving. It is Wednesday, November 23rd here in South Georgia. So we're patiently awaiting some nice big meals tomorrow. Today is a big day for our girls back there in the chicken tractor. Thanksgiving is going to come a day early for them as we're about to move them on this lush cover crop behind me. So the girls here have been patiently waiting as Abram and I went on a little camping trip in the mountains. Just got back yesterday. They've been kind of bumping along here in the grass. But today the torture is over and they finally get to get on this good stuff right here. Now this particular system here with the chicken tractor and the cover crops and all our little garden subplots is something we get quite a bit of questions and comments on when we're showing moving this chicken tractor around in our gardens and i think that probably has to do with the fact that there's not a lot of people out there doing this particular type of system with a backyard garden i haven't seen every single you know garden creator out there but i haven't really seen anybody doing this that's not to say that i invented something completely new we've tried this before this is just a a different chicken tractor that we've been using the last year and a half or so so i think the idea is kind of new to people and that's why they have so many questions so today as we move the chickens into this plot i also want to talk about this system a little bit more why it works so well for us so let's start off talking about the chicken tractor itself so this is something i built from scratch didn't really have any plans i went by just kind of had an idea in my mind of what i wanted and i especially didn't want it to be too heavy since we are moving it every single day and when you build something like this especially when you build it from scratch inevitably there's going to be some things about it you wish you would have done differently but there's really not a whole lot i would have done differently with this particular chicken tractor here the only thing i would have done differently is to beef up the back side here a little more since we use this chick lift right here now i didn't know when i built this that i was going to be using this chick lift didn't discover that until after we built it but had i known that i would have beefed up the back a little more i put some support bars in there to help out since we've added it but that's really the only thing i would have done differently now our previous chicken tractor that we had was a rectangular design and it was way too heavy i dreaded coming out here and moving that thing every day this one right here is really easy for me to move so this one is six by eight we have six hens in there which i think is probably the most you could fit comfortably in a six by eight chicken tractor like this they all seem happy they all look healthy but i wouldn't put more than six in there you'd probably be fine with four or five as well they could probably still mow down that six by eight area every day close to as well as six does so now let's make this short little move so they can start eating some of this stuff this cover crop isn't super tall yet it's only about a foot or so tall but it's nice and dense which is what i want to see before we start letting the chickens graze it if we don't let it establish really well then they'll take it down and we won't get a lot of regrowth on this which is what we want we want them to graze it and we want it to grow back so they can graze it again all right so we got them on there and they seem to be really enjoying this stuff so far picking at it good and it's going to be some good groceries for them over the next month or two now this whole grazing system we use kind of hinges around the fact that we have all these little subplots out here and i know this area may look big on camera but it's really not that big so we have an 120 by 70 area here that we call the dream garden got six subplots in that area so it's not that big of an area compared to you know what most people out here in the country have as far as backyard garden space 
Now on our previous chicken tractor model, we had a little in and out door on it and we had some of the Premier One electric netting around it so they could roam a little bit more. But what we found with that is that they didn't evenly graze these plots like they do in this setup here. They would just kind of pick and choose little patches there and thus we didn't get a real good even distribution of fertilizer. Now the other issue we had with the netting and kind of the more free range setup was hawks. We have a lot of hawks around here and they just kind of started picking off our chickens one by one. I don't really have to worry about predators trying to get underneath this chicken tractor even though there's not a floor to it. As you can see there, they're just walking along the ground because we have cats and dogs. I don't really have issues with possums or raccoons or anything trying to get in there. The main thing I have to worry about is hawks. That's why these chickens stay in there all the time. Now, what if you wanted to do a system like this, but maybe didn't have the resources to build a wooden chicken tractor like we've done here? What are your other options? Well, I've seen chicken tractors made out of PVC pipe and stuff like that. I don't really like those models because it's hard to get the chicken wire or the hardware cloth tight around the PVC pipe and it just doesn't end up looking as good. Seems like it maybe wouldn't last as long as when it's really stapled tight to the wood like we have on ours here. I do think a really good option would be like a chain link dog kennel. If you had a smaller one of those, maybe a walk-in chicken tractor, I think you could easily adapt wheels to one of those. The only issue with that is being able to build a nesting box in there without any wood. You'd have to figure out some way to rig that. That's why I like the wood here because it was easy to build the nesting box and the roosting bars up top. But a chain link dog kennel, they usually don't weigh that much unless they're the really big ones. I think that would make an awesome chicken tractor. The other possible benefit to having maybe one of those chain link dog kennels as a chicken tractor, something with a little larger footprint than this right here, is that you might not have to move it every single day. So depending on how many chickens you put in it, you may could leave it on one spot for two days and move it every two days without them tearing up the ground too much and still allowing the cover crop to regrow. In here with six chickens, I have to move this every other day to get some really good regrowth there. If I leave it on there two days, they'll wear it down too much. But with fewer chickens in here or maybe a larger footprint, you can just go to every other day. So hopefully that helps explain more the chicken part of the equation. Now let's talk a little bit more about the cover crop part of the equation. So this particular cover crop behind me, the overwintering mix from green cover seed, we planted back in early October, I believe. So it's taking about a month, month and a half to really establish well there. But we have the benefit down here of not getting too cold and we can kind of plant these types of cover crops all throughout the winter. Just to give you an example here, about a week and a half ago, we planted the same overwintering mix that we have over there that the chickens are on now, right here in this no-till plot. Now it's just starting to come up now. You can see things are starting to pop along there. So it took a good bit longer for this to germinate and get up and going. Now things have cooled off a bit, but we're still getting really good germination there. Now it's warmed up a good bit the last couple of days. You can see I'm in short sleeves out here today, but the week and a half before that, it was pretty cool for South Georgia. And that's why it took this plot so long to germinate and start popping from the soil there. When we planted that mix in early October where the chickens are now, we started seeing things popping in just a few days. This took about a week and a half, but it's still coming up really nicely. We seem to be getting good germination. So if you're still wanting to plant a cool season cover crop and you live in the Southern states, just kind of pick your spots a little bit. If you're gonna get a cool spell, maybe wait till that passes, plant it and it should come up just fine. Or you can plant it during the middle of the cool spell. Just have a little more patience, but it should come up nonetheless. Now the only downside to planting cover crop mixes like this later than October for us would be that not everything in here is really, really cold tolerant. So this rape seed that you see here that kind of looks like mustard or kale, it can get bit by the frost a little bit. And that's what we see happening here with these plants where the leaves are kind of brown, purplish brown. Those got bit back a little bit last week. Now it didn't kill them, 
but they are definitely stunted a little bit not all the plants are but some of them are the rest of the stuff in here doesn't bat an eye at those little light frosts like we had last week but some of the stuff in here it will bother a little bit now when we planted it was either this plot or that larger cover crop plot way back there we had someone comment with something really interesting that kind of got me thinking now when we plant these we plant them really really thick so i use 10 pounds of seed for a 30 by 35 plot like this which is a much higher seeding rate than any seed company would ever recommend for planting cover crops drilling or broadcasting them so what the commenter said is that when we plant really really thick like this we're probably not getting the maximal benefit from having all those different things in this cool season cover crop mix so because everything's packed in there so tightly there's some competition going on there everything's not going to necessarily grow out to its full potential and i think they have a very very valid point when we plant really thick like this a lot of these different components of this cover crop mix are not going to get as big as they would normally get if you planted them at the normal seeding rate but with our system we have to plant really thick like this and i'll tell you why so there are lots of great benefits to growing cover crops in the cool season and we've covered that on a previous video but one of the primary reasons i like to grow them is weed suppression we get chickweed down here really bad in the cool season it can take over a plot in no time and if you have a bad chickweed problem one year that means you're going to have an even worse chickweed problem the following year chickweed kind of grows on a mat along the soil has some really dense root systems and the only way i can really prevent chickweed from thriving in these plots is to have them planted thick like i do here and the other reasons kind of go back to the whole grazing system itself so i want there to be enough vegetation there in that six by eight rectangle where the chickens are sitting for them to get nice and full and happy in a day's time but also not wear it down too much if it wasn't planted real thick after one day of being on that six by eight spot we moved the chicken tractor off we would have a few bare spots in the soil where weeds could start to thrive we also wouldn't get near as good regrowth because they would wear it down a lot more if it wasn't quite as thick so having it thick keeps them fat and happy we don't have to buy any chicken food when they're on this plot here it regrows back nicely now when we're on our second or third time around the plot we may want them to start wearing it out a little bit as we get closer to turning over that plot and planting something else but especially on the first go round, i don't want them to wear it out too much i want it to regrow back so it can keep feeding them and keep feeding our soil now the last thing i want to mention here goes back to the chickens and the fact that we don't give them any layer food when they're on this lush cover crop here at least for the first two rounds on this plot being moved every single day now on their third round on the plot when it starts to get wore down a little bit we'll start adding some chicken food back to the mix but as long as it looks nice and lush and green like this this is all they'll eat and over the last year and a half since we've been using this system on this channel we've had some interesting comments about the nutritional needs of chickens some people said chickens gotta have some chicken food they're not cows they can't just survive and be healthy on this stuff alone so i did a little research and wanted to kind of give you a comparison of one of the components in this cover crop here comparing that to what's in kind of a standard layer pellet so we're going to use the balanza clover for example you can't really see it right now but it's down there and it will start thriving as temperatures cool and as these chickens start chewing up some of that other stuff so let me throw it on the screen here a side-by-side -side comparison of some of the components of balanza clover versus a layer food so if we look at protein there the clover's got more protein got more fat got more fiber got more lysine got more methionine doesn't have quite as much calcium but i haven't noticed any calcium issues so far all our eggs have nice thick shells on them and besides the clover there's lots of other stuff out there in that mix that can provide some calcium as well 
So not only are these cover crops great for our soil, but they're also great for our chickens. And a 10 pound bag of this overwintering mix costs about the same as a 40 or 50 pound bag of layer pellets. And I can get a lot more out of that 10 pound bag of cover crop seed than I can out of that 40 or 50 pound bag of layer pellets that's only gonna last me maybe a week or two. Whereas this stuff here will last all winter and provide lots of good nutrition for our chickens in addition to all the great benefits we're getting to our soils there. So hopefully that helps explain what we're doing here, how we do it, why we do it this particular way. And I know this won't work for everybody. Not everybody has the space. Not everybody has a chicken tractor or can build a chicken tractor. But if you have the space and can get your hands on a chicken tractor, I would highly, highly recommend giving this a try. We use a lot of different techniques around our different garden plots just to show you different ways to do stuff. But this particular strategy or technique here is by far the best in my opinion and does the most good things for our garden plots now before we go one small thing i wanted to mention that you might want to take advantage of so if you follow our channel you know we use a lot of this stuff right here the agar thrive fruit and flower and general purpose fertilizer we really really like it and a couple times a year they do these special promotions where if you order a jug they donate a jug to a particular nonprofit. Well, this week they're doing a promotion where if you buy a jug, they're going to donate a jug to a nonprofit called Farm Discovery, which helps teach kids practices of sustainable farming. So it helps pass that knowledge on to the next generation so we can still have active people out there growing nice, clean, healthy food. So if you go online to agarthrive.com, you can use the code LAZYDOGFARM to get 10% off. Whatever size jug you buy, they'll donate that size jug as well to Farm Discovery. That way, that particular operation can continue to help teach kids how to grow their own food. So I hope you enjoyed the video today, and if you have any questions or comments on our chicken tractor cover crop system here, please do put that in the comment section below. Love hearing your feedback on this system because it always kind of gets my wheels turning, helps me think about ways I can better our own garden plots. As always, you can find links in the description below to the AgriThrive Fertilizer or any of our other affiliate partners. You can also find coupon codes for some of those companies so you can take advantage of those discounts. Don't forget to go check out our website, lazydogfarm.com, where we've got our garden blog, recipes, hats, shirts, all kind of good stuff over there. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to subscribe, hit that notification button, like, and share, and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm. Old farewell mm -hmm. By the beauty of your life